Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? My name is Bob Varro and I'm here at Varro Production Studio in Amsterdam and today I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects and that's mixing rock and metal guitars. So I have Studio One in front of me as usual and I just recorded a couple of guitars as you can see here in blue. This is the mixing window and I just did it very basic. I have my favorite guitar plugin here called Archetype Gojira by Neural DSP. They make some really, really, really good guitar uh, amp plugins. So if you're a guitar player or if you're looking for a really, really good sound and a lot of diversity, please go uh, check them out. They're really good. Um, all right, let's jump right in. So this is the amp. I've recorded guitars, one on the left, one on the right, as you can see here by the panning knobs. And first of all, to take it step by step, if you want to create the best sound and the best guitar if possible, it's always good to first of all have a obviously a good guitar player, which can perform in time as much as possible and who has a clean way of playing, especially for certain type of riffs. You want to make sure that if you're doing multiple takes so you don't have to cut certain audio pieces too much back and forth. Okay, so as you can see here, um, I have my guitars, which I'll let you listen to first of all. All right, so these are just raw recordings. I didn't really do anything else besides just recording them and as you can see here I edited certain guitar parts and moved them back and forth a little bit here is a nice uh, trick if you want to move audio around within a certain region that you cut I'll give a new example here um, see these are pretty aligned this one for example I want to bring this part a little bit more to the front. What you can do as well is just select a region and hit, I'm not really sure what the shortcut is again. Not this one. All right, so Option Command X. So you see I cut the audio here and here. I'm gonna make two crossfades by clicking X. And to move it around without having to, as you can see, move the whole audio region. It's very easy to just hold down Option Command and move it a little bit more to the left. There you go. You can also see here, you can also listen obviously to the two here. All right, sounding pretty good, this audio part. And I would do the same thing for every other audio part. You know, you can, you can do this as detailed as you want, but just for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go too much into detail. Um, let me see this one, for example, up until here, move a little bit back, hit the X, there you go. All right, then the next thing that I wanna do is create a bus for uh, your guitar, so these two guitars are playing the same thing. So this is recorded one time, recorded another time. This isn't a duplicate. I literally just played it another time, okay? So these two are going into this bus. Same for these two guitars are going into this bus and these two guitars are going into this bus, as you can see. So first of all, before I go into the tone of my guitar, just wanted to clarify that I put this guitar amp plugin on each different channel but what you can do as well is take that same plugin put it on the bus and set it as stereo so that will save you a little bit of cpu power okay but this was just as i was recording it just had to put it on every different channel um and it gives me a little bit more flexibility as well with tone and all of this stuff but this totally depends on uh, your preference. So first of all, uh, looking at the tone, um, 
a good first piece of advice is to sometimes not overdo with gain because if you have too much gain you get this whoosh of sound and you don't have enough clarity and especially if you're going to start adding layers and multiple guitars on top of each other you really want to make sure that all of them have enough definition so they work together in a very nice way so you have some really good presets here <laughs> See, this is a beautiful example. Like once I turn up some, some overdrive. Right, so I'm going to create a loop here first. I like it without the overdrive um, pedal, just the amp. And I'll dial back the gain knob a little bit. sounds more tight and I really like that sound so this was the plugin I was tweaking so once that is done I can put it on the bus remove both of them and what I do is I pan one to the left and one to the right <laughs> Another really cool feature to tighten up your uh, guitars is to is to increase your gate and just feel wherever the guitar chucks are cutting through. Right, this is sounding pretty good so we have a really nice rock guitar and when it comes to mixing um, for for rock and metal guitars I um, most of the time well actually every time I take the EQ plugin and I'll remove everything below 80 Hertz so all the low-end rumble <laughs> See, starting from around 80, 90, you start, feel, you start feeling the energy of the guitar coming up, so everything below 80. I'm gonna cut that off, okay? So first of all, there's the amp, second, EQ, then after that, because metal guitars and other guitars as well, but they're known obviously for having some harsh frequencies in there. So I take the Soothe plugin from Ook Sound. And actually here, what I do is I just take a preset, um, Electric Guitar D Harsh. It's a really good one, and Electric uh, Guitar Harsh is also a very good preset. If you wanna know more about this plugin, I have another video where I talk in depth about how you can use this plugin uh, properly. <laughs> By enabling and disabling this plugin, you're clearly here how it still leaves your guitar intact and with enough character, but it will take away some of that harshness. Mm -hmm. 
I'll let you this guys decide what you prefer the most, but I love this one in this case. And basically what this is doing is cle basically cleaning up some of the uh, two harsh frequencies that are popping out too much and leveling them out a little bit. I also have the soft option here and not the hard one because otherwise it's going to change the sound too drastically and I still want to keep a little bit of a natural sound. And All right, so this is the start for... This is a really good start and then basically you can mess around with so many other plugins. I'll I'll give you a few examples. So I really love the decapitator for example. Because the decapitator um, if you go to um, B for example. Well not not that much obviously but you can This just gives your uh, guitars a little bit more of a fat body, basically, and just, you know, a little bit more balls to the guitar sound. And yeah, I really love this uh, Decapitator plugin. Devil Lock is also a really good one. And you can also mess around with, with how you uh, place your plugins. Obviously, the sound goes from here all the way down through this plugin so sometimes you want your suit plugin at the end of your chain or maybe you want it before really depends on what you're trying to go for in this case i'll put it before the suit plugin <laughs> It also gives a really nice glue to your sound, I find. So this sounds pretty cool. All right, so then the next step in making your guitar sound amazing um, is, well, at least in my case, I really love the FUDS box, as you have probably seen in my other videos as well. This is a really, really good plugin that can add a lot of um, extra harmonies, warmth, and character to your sound. And the Footsbox Artist presets, the Churco presets, are really, really good presets. I love the wrong side of drumming and here the Crusher drum bus. I know it says drumming, but I love to put that as a send for my electric guitars because it really adds something very particular that I love very much. And so again, this is just how to make rock sounds sound really good. And then afterwards, I'll show you more about how you can uh, layer your guitars and make them sound big, wide, and just stack them up, basically. All right, so again, going back to the start. <laughs> So basically what this does, you can probably hear it already, the Foots box has this really nice uh, mid-range distortion that helps your guitars and pretty much any other instrument cut through the mix, but it also smoothens out the high end a little bit. So putting this plug in, I'm using it as a scent now, but feel free to put it on the guitar track itself and mess around with your, um, with your mix knob, go back and forth, push some of that distortion and see what it does okay all right so this is how i mix uh, regular rock and metal guitars now i'll show you a few other steps because this is just um left and right basically and another really cool trick and that you can apply in your songs is that now my guitars are completely to the ref left and completely panned to the right but something really cool what you could do is to bring them in a verse a little bit closer 
towards the middle. And once the chorus comes in, you pan them heart left, heart right. And that way you create a little bit of contrast between verses and choruses, okay? So off to the next one. So I have here more guitars. I haven't done any time alignment whatsoever, but I'm not gonna do that for now because I wanna show you what I meant with making your guitar sound even bigger. You can also do this with these two guitars if you have more guitar parts in that region here. You can also do the same thing there. But basically what I wanna show you here is that with panning, you can also add so much uh, depth and thickness to your guitar. So we'll start off with the first one. There's a lot of distortion going on here, so I'm just gonna make this window a bit smaller so you can see it. Alright, this is sounding pretty good. This is on the left channel, so I'll put it on the bus now. Remove these two. Take this one to the left. This one is to the right again. And these are my main guitars, right? I'm just gonna copy these plugins for now. Fuzzbox as well. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the other guitar, so I'm just gonna mute these for now and listen to this one. Also, a really cool feature here in this plugin is that you can, let me see, add an octaver. makes it sound even fuller. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, again, copy this over here, remove these two plugins. Dial up the gate knob a lot. This is very drastic, but I really want everything between where I'm not playing to be gone because I'm gonna add it to the other uh, guitars basically. So I have my drums. So what I do basically is so I have my main guitar, which I pan fully to the left and fully to the right. But you can also do the opposite. This is obviously taste. Then I have my other guitar. And what I do with the panning knobs, make it dual, and I pan those a little bit more towards the middle. Let's say 60, and here as well, 60. And what I'm doing now is basically filling up the stereo spectrum with guitar. And to get even a better result, what you can do 
is uh, to go for a complete other amp and sound. So if I just take the default setting, this is something very, uh, is, is, this is sounding very different. So I'll take this preset for now. Make sure this is in stereo, obviously. And again, here you also do the same thing, cut the low end. If you want to give it some more flavor, I'll just leave it as it is for now because I really like the tone. See, this is a little bit more fuzzy sounding, a little warmer, while this one is more aggressive. But you can also do the opposite. You can take this one fully to the left, fully to the right, and bring this one more towards the middle. Let's say 50. This one also at 50. I know the drums are not sounding as good as in this track, but you know this is just to give you an example of um, how you can mix your guitars. Um, yeah, there's a bunch more things we can we can talk about, obviously, right? Like like this amp, for example. What what presets and what different settings you can use? Because there is a pedal section where you have an octaver, a wah, but basically the main important things is to conclude this is that obviously play the guitar tight make sure it's in time have a click track together with your drums really depends on how good you are but make sure it's as good as in time as possible also before you start mixing make sure uh, your guitars are aligned as good as possible because otherwise if you're mixing and your guitars all over the place timing wise you're not gonna be able to focus uh, that much because you're gonna just be distracted by this guitar being too soon or that guitar too late at least that's that's how I feel it and yeah then the other thing is I know in rock and metal a lot of people are like, yeah, more gain, more distortion, make it sound heavier. But if you're actually mixing music, it's even better and even more punchy and aggressive sounding. If you dial back the gain, if you increase your gate and make things a little bit more tight, you know what I mean? Also, you have a few options here on these amps called presence and depth. Also mess around with these two, depending on the riff. And it's actually like once you have your tone dialed in, you really have something that you like, that's already the biggest part done. Because besides your tone and the panning game that I just showed you, from left, right, panning other guitars more towards the middle, um, yeah, that, that, that's basically the, the, the most important thing, you know, like have your tone good and ready and then you can mess around with your panning, add layers and also different tones of guitars. Like don't be afraid of, of messing around with different kinds of guitar sounds, flavors, plugins, uh, fuzzy sounding guitars, aggressive sounding guitars and start blending all of them um, together. Same with, with a guitar solo, for example, make it sort of sound warm while the other is sounding more aggressive and and yeah don't be afraid to to cut and boost certain frequencies as well to to make guitars blend you know like 
take out some mid range here, but then boost it, boost it on the other end, and see what. <laughs> Right, and that way you can completely customize your tones. Again, there's a lot of different things that I might not have gotten into during this video because actually it's very basic, but it can also be you know more extensive. So if you have questions about how I approach my guitars or any other questions regarding mixing guitars or, or questions about the plugins, the software that I use or should I go this way or that way with guitars or no or yes, do this or no, please don't do that. You know what I mean? Don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to uh, help you out. Or if you want to, you can also just comment it below uh, the video here. Again, guys, this is the video for now. I really appreciate you watching. Um, my uh, little uh, metal guitar tutorial here. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you're more than welcome to do so. And yes, thank you so much for sticking with me till the end and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.